Hello again, and welcome to the Prince Magnum channel. I'm your host, Prince Magnum. Welcome to Two Sides of the Same Coin. Well, Project Vera was running kind of rough, and uh, we couldn't exactly figure out why it wasn't time for a tune-up or anything like that. Well, of all the things, when we began to, uh, you know, I, I decided I was just going to go ahead and change the plugs and be done with it and see if that would fix it. And while trying to video and all that, I kept running into issues where batteries kept dying on me. Uh, I'd swap them out for maybe ones that I thought might have been good because I had bought a brand new pack, but they're MIA. Uh, so basically it was an ongoing issue and you'll see where the batteries kept dying and everything. And beyond all that, I actually did run into a problem one little problem and it's like what are you doing where are you at what do you you know what's going on and you'll see in kind of like a a spot a little further ahead where it's like you don't see me you know you just see the engine and things like that and then all of a sudden my hand pops back in and what's really happening is, is number three when I went to go put the plug back in I, I knew I had to gap it and I always gap my plugs even though when you buy them and, and you know the guys at AutoZone will tell you they're pre-gapped and they are they are pre-gapped to the factory specs well two things number one I don't put my plugs back in at factory specs when I have a carbureted engine uh, one of the secrets to my gas mileage is, is I'll gap them about five to ten degrees wider than what the factory calls for depending on the engine will determine that so that's what we did here 44 we gapped them at 51 okay so that's a good ballpark figure and and I have I've done this with all of my carbureted engines and I'm always glad that I do because you see a big jump in fuel economy a lot of times so that's just one of those fine examples but you know trying to get you guys a good video uh, you know it honestly and truthfully despite the camera crashes and everything you will really see it doesn't take really that long to change a set of spl uh, spark plugs um, but basically, as I was gapping uh, the plug, you know, number three's uh, new plug, what ended up happening was, is I noticed right away uh, that that particular spark plug was not to factory specs. I mean, I went through the blades and everything for my feeler gauge, and I noticed right away that it was, it was actually at 30. Now, I'm not saying the manufacturer did anything wrong. I'm not saying that anybody did anything wrong. But remember, time and time again, just because they're pre-gap doesn't mean that that's the gap. That there's that they're you know that when you get them, that's their gap. Okay, uh, gap them again because through shipping and everything, they're going to get banged around. They're going to get a little beat up, and yeah, they're still good spark plugs, but they're not going to stay at the gap. Uh, let me illustrate a little bit better because you know you'll kind of see what I'm talking about as I explain if you think about it for just a brief moment the people make the spark plug they gap it they put it in a box it's thrown into a big crate it goes on a shelf then it's shipped out uh, you know it, it shipped out goes cross country from wherever it's at and then it gets to a station where it's broken down and then various crates go to their locations and then there's somebody who puts it on a shelf and then you buy it and then you uh, you know buy it from the auto parts place and then it gets beat around and then it gets all the way you know all the way home in your car after being slammed around and everything do you really expect those plugs to still be gapped where they're supposed to be and the answer is no it's not anybody's fault that's just the way it works in the world I wish it was you know I in a perfect world they would come to you gapped at the spec that they're supposed to be at but it doesn't work that way I'm sorry folks uh, it just doesn't happen that way. That's in a perfect world, and we don't live in a perfect world. So gap your spark plugs, and if you remember the video where we changed the plugs in spirit, well, there again, um, you know, please do not use those little round, cheap spark plug gappers. Get yourself an actual feeler gauge. It costs you a couple extra dollars more and honestly and truthfully it's a great investment it's a multitasker if you will um, because if you know I you know if you've watched some of my other stuff you know I like cooking 
and I'm a big Alton Brown fan, and he believes in uh, multitaskers. Well, I believe in multitaskers in my toolbox, and if you get yourself an actual feeler gauge, you can gap spark plugs, you can adjust the gap on your on your uh, valves. It's just a great tool to have in a toolbox because it has so many different other uses. Um, if you still run the uh, the mechanical distributor, um, you can still you know set the uh, set the gap for your uh, for your points I mean just trust me when I say get yourself a feeler gauge you'll be glad you did because those stupid little cheap spark plug gappers um, they you know when you you know run them in there if you're running platinum tips uh, it'll scrape the platinum off then your plugs won't work right and it just on and on and on you see what I'm saying so get yourself a feeler gauge spend a little extra money on it I promise you, you'll be glad you did. Um, one of the things that we also noticed, and I'm not going to blame anybody but me. Um, we did, you know, Princess Fade changed the spark plugs the first time herself. And she did an amazing job. Unfortunately, because of her smaller stature, um, she just didn't have enough grunt to really, you know, torque those down. And the only one she couldn't do was the sixth one in the back, you know, the last one in the very back. She couldn't reach it because she's just not a super tall woman. She's maybe, you know, she pushes it at five foot. And I love her that way. I wouldn't have her any other way. Uh, but unfortunately, because she just doesn't have, you know, the height and and she's just not super, super strong, um, I quickly found as I was changing the plugs that she that the plugs just weren't in there tight enough so she was also losing a little compression now where is this my fault I should have went back through and double checked it um, I left it at that I wanted it to be her tune up as much as possible and you know it was my fault I should have double checked him so if anybody's at fault on this it's me I should have double checked it and made sure they were tight enough so she did an amazing job unfortunately she she's you know it's gonna you know it's gonna take doing more work to you know to project Vera and to project spirit for her to get those get her muscles up you know so she can torque those down because when I first started you know I'm not a big guy you know uh, when I first started turning wrenches I weighed in at 115 pounds and you know I'm five nine you know now that I'm older and you know I've put I've had enough time to put work into vehicles and things like that I'm a lot stronger uh, so grabbing hold of something like this and just you know so it's just one of those things so she's gonna need more time so guys who want to sit there and pick on no she did an amazing job because if you remember Project Vera ran tip top for quite a while, even like that. So she did a great job. It's just I had to go back and fix my own mistake because I didn't double check it. So, you know, that's just part of this deal. Now, if you look close enough when I would pull the plugs out, you'll notice that those plugs uh, were pretty gunked up. You know, they had oil on them, uh, they had all sorts of things you know it's just one of those things maintain your vehicles please time and time again maintain your vehicles okay and all you knuckleheads that have got the new vehicles and go oh well they don't need that much maintenance and then if when you think they're ready for maintenance you'll take them in and have the computer adjusted to you know to compensate for the fact that um, you know that it needed a tune-up instead of actually changing the plugs well guess what if you look at those plugs you're expecting that engine even with adjusting the computer properly uh, to basically you're adjusting a computer to run on bad parts this in turn means that you're still not burning the fuel properly which means that <coughs> you're actually dumping pollutants into the air so by doing this project Vera now leaves a smaller carbon footprint than your new vehicle so you stop that crap don't joke with me okay if you mean to leave a smaller carbon footprint 
don't BS yourself. Get a proper tune-up. And if you can, do it yourself. Save the money. If you can't, find a reputable shop that will do it for you. And if a shop won't put the plugs in that you bring in, don't even bother with them. Okay? If they say it's a liability issue, that's bull crap. Because I won't take any vehicle to a shop that won't allow me to just bring in, you know, uh, bring in my, you know, bring in my own parts. I like certain parts, and that's the way it's going to be. All right, so that's where I stand on that. Uh, and as you'll notice, constantly, 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 I was dealing with the fact that the camera kept crashing. And I was really getting frustrated, and it took a lot longer than it actually should have. But if you actually go through where I was, you know, where I actually got it to, you know, to, it really didn't take that long. So, once again, these cars are great. And in the end, you'll get to hear how Vera fires up and does an amazing job once again. This is just, again and again and again, I cannot say, I love these cars. Um... Uh, Obviously, there's more to be done to Vera. There's more to be done to Spirit. They're old cars. They got to be worked on. They got to be brought back up to snuff. But I promise you, you take good care of these cars, and they'll take good care of you. And, you know, just trust me when I say, if you do what I'm showing you in these videos these cars will also outlive you and it'd be kinda cool to say that your grandkids will be fighting over them when you're gone so you just trust me when I say this is gonna be one heck of a cool video I couldn't believe how great Vera fired up I couldn't be happier what's left to do well we've got to change out our alternator but because of the um, the stupid uh, air compressor for the air conditioning it's it's next to impossible to change it. Great job, Ford. Uh, <laughs> that was one of their bad moves on these cars. And uh, just kind of sucks. It's just one of them things. You know, there, uh, the one plug that I did do, it didn't look that bad. So we're going to save it in case something happens. And we need to put in, you know, put that one back in for whatever reason. But let's hear what you all think of how how Vera runs. I'm just going to shut up right now and let you hear it. Well, now that she's running a lot more smooth, it's time to go ahead and clean her carb. Okay, basically remove the air cleaner and sit there and basically as I'm spraying this in, I'm revving it up, basically keeping uh, Vera from uh, flooding out. Um, it takes it a little bit, but once you do that, I mean, you'll even notice a little bit of stuff puffing out her tailpipe, but she runs a lot smoother these days. And... All it took was just a little bit of effort. So there you have it. Brings us to the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed this. I had a lot. I had a lot of fun making it, despite all the, you know, the hiccups. But she runs a lot better, and I hope you all get a little something out of this. With all of that being said, get out there and work on a project. Tell your sweethearts that you love them. And above all, if nobody has told you that they love you today, Prince Macum does. God bless you, and have a happy 24. Thank you.